there's nothing in there. It's like way down there. It is? This place is so sweet. Mom, mom, look at this. There's a rope up there. That is. I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm do. I'm gonna do this. step back there. Please don't step back there and stare at the tap and like, okay, what do I want? Have an idea of what you want before you go back there. If you have any questions about the beer, feel free to ask me. Uh, if you don't exactly feel comfortable pouring your own beer, you want kind of a tutorial, uh, I'm going to give you one, even though just, you may not be feel like saying, hey, you guys, this is how you do it. Basically, when I pull this out, see how clear that beer is coming out of there? If I pull it out halfway out, you see all the air in that line? If I try to fill up a beer, that is going to be one ugly beer, right? So basically, what you want to do is you want to pull that line all the way out, get that clear liquid going, go at an angle until it's about half full, then drop it about an inch and a half to two inches off down, turn it off just before it gets to the top. Then you got yourself a nice little pour. Um, so guys, like I said, feel free to come on back here and pour your own beer. We're going to do it to go around this way, come back. Alan, you're doing it. Um, you're doing again, it. If you want to know about a certain beer before you pour it, feel free to ask me. Huh. That's a great picture. Uh, <laughs> so guys, from uh, going around and around this way, come back and get yourself a beer. Can you pour me one? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> come on back, don't be shy. Don't be shy. I'm doing this. No, I'm doing this. Dang it. I, I want to get this. No, no, I, no, wait, I'm doing this, one second. Here, yeah, Mom, try. And what am I supposed to hit? Um, there's a little hook right here. It's addicting too. <laughs> oh, 
I'm just trying to see that. My turn. Ooh. This is actually a little fun. No way. Uh, uh. Oh! I hit it. <clears throat> God, I keep hitting it. Yeah, it's supposed to go over it and click onto it. Oh! Mom, you're not doing so well. Uh, no. What's that? Did I give it on one track? Try it. Sure, but I can't get it on 20. <laughs> I keep hitting, I keep nicking it though. Oh, you're thinking it's cool beer. <laughs> but they had it's cool. Alright, one try. Let's see if I do this again. I mentioned earlier we call work. So we're going to sparge that. We're going to separate that grain from the work. We're going to take that grain and we're going to put it outside on our truck. I'll get to that in a couple seconds. We're going to take that work and move it down to this next vessel, which is simply a storage vessel, as I mentioned earlier, while the work sits and waits for our burning kettle. Now our burning kettle, we're going to slow down and move it to the side of that thing. Like bubbles, we're going to see the cascade of the bed water as much bubbles. So it's going to hard to see what's going to pass in there. So the higher the sugar, the chances are the higher the alcohol as well. Um, 
Any other questions? Yeah, why is the uh, one block bigger than the other? Because it's got, it's, we're separating the grain from the ports. We have two different things going on there versus just one batch here, one batch there, one batch there. We got two of them. So, um, so now, guys, when we were downstairs, I was talking about that uh, that kept that boiling system downstairs. Well, being a 100 batch, 100 barrel batch, this is a 200 barrel batch. We can knock out 6,200 gallons of that work in the exact same four hours thanks to the efficiency of the boiling kettle down there. Uh, so, guys, four hours downstairs, 3,100 gallons. Four hours up here, 6,200 gallons. That's 9,300 gallons of work every four hours in 12 batches a day. Think they could drink that much beer in their lifetime? No, <laughs> no, they not. Uh, anybody else have any questions? You guys ready to roll? What's that? Oh, uh, those are simple water. That's that's our water supply. No. What's the water supply? Oh, uh, sorry. What's the water supply? Oh, uh, we get from the city for public. Yes. You guys ready to keep on moving? Yeah. Direct this way. I want to. I want to get that thing. I'm trying it one more time. No. No. I'm gonna make this. Okay, I'm not gonna make this. Don't trip downstairs. I don't wanna be quiet, I'm not gonna trip. Whoa, whoa. These stairs though. Mom, I'm okay. <laughs> All right, so guys, now typically on my tours, when we're outside, that typically means it's story time. So, story time. Yeah. Guys, we're on the laptop before 1991. Um, the brewer was born. Uh, when they first started, it was just Jeff and Kim for a while. Um, Jeff did all the brewing and some of the packaging. Kim did some of the packaging and everything else. She was responsible for the advertisement, the distribution, the POS, you name it. Kim took care of it. It was kind of a running joke back in the day that Kim Jordan was known for driving her station wagon around the city of Fort Collins with bomber cases, the fat tire in the back, and her five and seven year old son, Zach and Nick, in the front. They were the only five and seven year old to know every single liquor store in the city of Fort Collins. <laughs> now, guys, uh, 1991, obviously, like I said, it was just the two of them. 1992, they realized they were getting kind of busy and they needed some help. So they inquired on a guy named Brian Callahan. Now, Brian Callahan was a resident of Laramie, Wyoming, and obviously that's a bit of a commute every single day. So, uh, Brian uh, said, all right, well, Jeff and Kim asked him, said, how about this? Come down for two or three days out of the week, package a bunch of beer, and then take a bunch of beer home. Worked well for everybody. We did that for about a year. 1993 rolls around, and Jeff and Kim realized they were getting too big for their basement, and they had to get out of there. So if you're familiar with Fort Collins, you drive straight down Linden Street here, just before you get to Old Town, you're going to cross some railroad tracks. Just before you cross those tracks, on the left-hand side of the road is a lumber yard. That lumber yard was our brewery from 1993 until 1995 when it moved into the mothership. Now, you guys want to hear some production numbers real quick. Yes. The very first year in business in Jeff and Kim's basement in 1991, we made and sold 288 barrels of beer at 31 gallons per barrel. And that with equipment you guys saw upstairs, that's not bad. Now, only four years later, later our, only first, our very first year here at the Mothership, 1995, who wants to take a stab at how many barrels we brewed and sold that year? 532. 532. That's pretty good. Any other guesses? 5,000. 5,000. Any others? You were the closest. I'll give you that. But you're still 50,000 short. <laughs> 55,000 barrels in 1995. Only four years old. That was way off. That's some serious growth. So you can imagine. When they moved into the lumber yard down the street, they needed some more help. So they inquired on Brian again, this time about some full-time help. To which Brian said, how do you feel about this? Brian kind of thought about it. You know, Brian was in his own situation. He was getting ready to move out to the East Coast with his girlfriend. Uh, he had brewery aspirations of his own, but he kind of thought about it when Jeff and Kim offered him this. He said, you know what? These guys know something. Maybe I can hang out here for a while and learn what their secrets are so that when I get out to the East Coast and I start my own brewery, I can have those same successes. 
So he mentioned that to Jeff and Jim, and they agreed. They said, okay, you can sleep at our brewery, you can shower at our brewery, and we'll pay you in beer. Brian agreed. What, what else do you need? So he did that for about a year. And in 1994, uh, Brian comes to Jeff and Kim again and says, guys, thank you for everything. You taught me well. You treated me well. My girl's out on the coast waiting for me, and I got my brewery aspirations. I'm out of here. Jeff and Kim, not huge fans of this idea, said, Brian, we would really like you to stay, but we'll take. Brian said, there's nothing you, you can do. I got my priorities, and I'm going to follow through. Jeff and Kim said, uh, well, let me, let me put it this way. Jeff and Kim had a little ace up their sleeve. You guys want to know what it was? I'm going to tell you in about 10 minutes. They right were going to kill him. Cliffhanger. We're going to run up front. We're going to talk about some bikes. And we're going to have some sour beer. Who's never had a sour beer before? Guess his name. That counts. <laughs> oh, hey, you right, had guys, a sour we're beer? Gonna go front, we're gonna find out oh, right we got now. a little we're drinker just, here, don't we? We're going to talk about some bikes. Right this way, guys. Uh, at least I raised my hand. You're still a drinker, so. <laughs> no, but you drink jello shots. Or eat them, whatever you want to say. It's no different. Oh, Right now, for a hundred bucks, who might? I would. Two hundred. Three? Four. Do you even have four? No. Um, either way, you got parents, we'll talk. Uh, guys, there's actually two ways to go about getting one of these bikes. Find them as one of them. Look on eBay. Look on eBay. Can we steal them? The, yeah, there's, there's morals. Um, <laughs> Fat tire. <laughs> uh, guys, but unless the person selling it has absolutely no idea what they have, or they just really need the money, you're going to be paying upwards of about $1,000 for that bike, and that's not an exaggeration. Two other ways you can get that, that bike is uh, you can win one. We give them away in raffles all the time. But the way I've come across, the easiest way to get one of these bikes is to work here for one year, because on your one-year anniversary, they just plan to give it to you as an anniversary gift. It's really kind of a cool deal. So that being the 2013 model, any employee hired in 2012 got that bike on their one-year anniversary in 2013, including myself. My anniversary was September 4th of 2013. However, I picked my bike up on August 30th, just a hair early, because there was a little shindig going on on August 31st that I absolutely had to ride my bike in. Anybody know what that was? Oh, that's from downtown. Warmer. Tour de Fat! There we go! <laughs> Guys, if you don't know what a Tour de Fat is, it's basically this. Three festivals all wrapped up into one. Number one, it's a fat tire festival. You got fat tire, sunshine, ranger, shift, all of our good beers on tap being poured, lots of good people, and lots of good music. Secondly, it's a whimsical bike parade. You're going to see some of the craziest home welded together bikes you have ever seen in your life. The third, I like Mardi Gras without the beach. You're going to see some people dressed up in some of the nuttiest costumes you've ever seen, just getting stupid, and it's really, really fun to watch. Now, if you've never been to a tour of that, I highly recommend that you go dressed up because if you don't, you're the one who's going to feel out of place, I guarantee you. Oh, now, guys, each time we do a tour de fat, uh, let, me, let me back up by saying we did a tour de fat in 13 different cities across the country last year. Um, Denver, Fort Collins, uh, Asheville, or, uh, sorry, Nashville, uh, Tempe, San Diego, San Francisco, all across the country. So, guys, each time we do a tour de fat in that local community, all the proceeds from that tour de fat go to that local community's nonprofit biking organizations. Uh, so it's a fundraiser for those local communities that we do it in. Next year, we're going to be doing it in 20 different cities across the country. So we even uh, we uh, we uh, upped it just a little bit more. So if you're not from the area and you're kind of interested, look on NewBelgium.com events and then uh, Tour de Fat and check it out. Like I said, it's a free event and it's a lot of fun. Um, but guys, uh, guess we had the biggest Tour de Fat we have ever had on the one I uh, the one I went on and rode my bike on. You guys want to know how many people showed up? Twenty five thousand people. Wow. Twenty five thousand was... party. And if you can imagine, about 20,000 of these people rode their bike. There wasn't a bench, a tree, post. There was nothing to lock my bike up. So I ended up locking my bike up with six other bikes. It worked out pretty well. Uh, um, but uh, so, guys, if you've never been, I highly recommend you check out. But uh, last thing I want to mention before we head inside is this bike right here. If you look at this bike, we have a, the red ones are all over the place. That's our most popular bike. That is our 2011 bike. Now, uh, if you're figuring out the math on that, from 1991 to 2011, that's exactly 20 years. That's our 20th anniversary cruiser. Now, uh, now uh, Kim Jordan, our CEO, said, you know what? We've been in business for 20 years with double-digit growth each and every single year. We need to celebrate this and celebrate it right. So she dug into her pocket at about $350 to $400 wholesale each bike and bought about 420 some of those bikes, one for each and every single coworker we had in 2011. Now, guys, it didn't matter if you've been here for five days or for five years. Kim Jordan bought you that bike. It's her way of saying, 
congratulations. It's been a great ride. Let's keep this ride going. So having said that, guys, that is our 20th anniversary bike. But the coolest thing about that bike right there is that rack on the back holds a 12-pack. Perfect. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Now, guys, uh, we're going to go on inside. We're going to have some sour beer. When we walk inside, you're going to see the challenge of people uh, to the left-hand side drinking a bunch of beer and clean glass and having some fun. But I guarantee you, they pay for that beer. I, I have three beers. So please follow me. Please feel free to leave your empty glasses, however, on the bar top as we walk by. Yes, you got a question. Is that the fat tire bike? No, that's just somebody. That's just somebody's own personal. That's not anybody's oh. cruiser at all. But those are fun. You ever ridden on one of those? Oh, those are fun. You can go just about anywhere on one of those. Right this way, guys. Right. I was thinking if that was like the fat tire that one person was riding yep. in the very beginning yep. of it. Like, all this. Snow is. Yeah, I had, I had a buddy of mine with the uh, tires a little bit bigger than that. He brought a bike here and he said, Take it for a ride. I took it. I went down the ditch. I went all the way over to that field. I was just started jumping everything. It was so fun. Oh, so fun. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> this is actually kind of fun. So this is actually kind of fun. Yes. No, this is actually a little bad because I don't get a drink anymore. We're going back at 121. So it's closed. We're going this way. Oh, that's where it's closed? Yeah, we're going this way. No. No, I do like, no, I don't like the fact that this does ruin it. Some people like it. Oh, a slide. 12 pack. That kind of looks like the end of the tour. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. The last one. Thanks, man. Welcome. Appreciate it, man. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Well, I don't have one. Alright, so guys, uh, is there anybody from Fort Collins here? Cash the good with your rigor up the way. Guys, know that translates into. Cash your powder, or hide the powder. They used to hide their gunpowder out with that canyon to let it be sold back in the day. So, this is actually what we like to call our cash the voters. The voters are oversized, retired wine barrel. All of the yellows, all the tans, and this is what I've been removed from this wood. So, this is our stack of barrels. Guys, if you look around in this room, we have 35 barrels in this room. Each of these barrels Smile. contain a Belgian golden ale, we call it Felix, or a sweet chocolatey brown ale. We call Oscar. How do you guys like Oscar? Oscar. It's pretty tasty. What we're drinking right now. You guys like Oscar? The it was available in six pack bottles. Would you guys buy it? Too bad. It never happened. It's a blueprint beer, guys. Just like Felix. Felix and Oscar, they're like the odd couple. That's our blueprint beers. They will never be sold as is. These barrels, what we're going to do is have 35 barrels. Each of these barrels is going to contain Oscar or Felix. We're going to let that bacteria and probiotics that are inside the wood, things like lactobacillus. And mice, he's so what's the, what's the barrels? Is it the same uh, no, those are uh, like peach whiskey or blackberry whiskey we got from Leopold's or something like that. Where we're just gonna take those barrels, we're gonna put a farmhouse style ale in there, like uh, like beer guard or something, and let it kind of absorb some of those flavors. So I assume that's more of an internal beer. Internal water, huge one. Yes, remember that tart, tart, tart apple smell or that tart apple flavor? Yeah. That's what's gonna get out of this beer. It doesn't have any crab apples in it. But it's very similar to that flavor. Um, so the last thing I want to mention before, uh, two more things I want to mention before I let you drink this beer. Uh, guys, this beer comes in 22 ounce bottles at $20 a bottle. This stuff is not a beer volume beer. It's not made for sharing with your friends in a football game. This is something you sip on in a night watcher, like a drink, like a glass of wine, while you read your book and watch a movie or something. Um, the last thing I want to ask though. Now, if the answer to this is I don't know, it's a definite no. Who has never had a sour beer before? Put your hands up. Put your hands up if you've never had a sour beer before. Really? 
You? You have one? Alright, so you two and you, you guys don't count. Everybody else watch these guys' face when they take their first drink. Having said that, guys, without any further ado, cheers. cheers. Enjoy your sour beer. Thank you. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah, if you open mine, give it a few sips. Yeah. It's got that little bit of vinegary up to it, too, but it's more of a sour apple thing going. Absolutely. Uh, some of the other flavors you might recognize here, some plum, maybe a little bit of cherry, but most definitely apple. <laughs> right? Right? You got lots of good things in there for you. Lots of good things in there for you. So, no, it tastes what do you guys think? Who's liking this beer? <laughs> Can I smell it? Who's liking this beer? I like it. Who's paying attention to what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, who's on the fence? Who says, hey, give me a few more sips. I, I need some help. I'm going to keep on sipping on this. Who says they're on the fence? Who says, I never want this beer in my mouth again? <laughs> Who gave it less than two sips? <laughs> Come on, I saw you guys. My wife took mine. <laughs> You want that? No, I want I'll pour more. Ma'am, did you want some? Yeah, you sure? Want did you like it? I just want a little bit though. Like that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have any upstairs, they didn't make it up for it. How long you guys check the barrels? Uh, Taste it sour. Alright guys, you guys ready to keep on rolling? Should we drink some of it? I don't care. Do you have any questions about the sour beer and sour processes? No. <laughs> at $300 a tank? No. no. <laughs> uh, we're missing somebody. Please do not go wandering off the tour. Where'd you go? Where are you going? Looking at the barrels. <laughs> Looking at the barrels. Guys, thank you for everything you taught me well, you treated me well. I'm gone. I got my girl and I got my brewery waiting on me. Jeff and Tim, not huge fans of this idea, said Brian, we would like you to stay. How would you feel about part ownership of New Belgium Brewery if you stayed? Guys, this is only 1994. New Belgium was not that big yet, but it's something that Brian had to consider. So he calls his girlfriend on the coast and says, Hey, this is where they're off. Me. What do you think? She said, Brian, let me get this straight. You have a lifelong dream, a lifelong ambition to own your own brewery. Right now, you have an opportunity to get in at a ground level of a brewery that is growing like crazy as an owner. And you're actually contemplating this? She said, Brian, I support you 100%. But I've already moved across the country once for a boyfriend. I'm not doing it again. So Brian had a choice to make. He had to choose between the beer or the woman. What do you guys think he chose? Beer. beer. Would I be telling the story if he chose the woman? <laughs> <laughs> no. So he chose the beer. 20 years later, he's been with New Belgium for 22 years now. 22 years is the longest tenured owner, longest tenured co-worker. You guys want to know what his title is now? Director of Fun. Who would like a job at a brewery where your title is Director of Fun? You guys don't take that the wrong way. Brian is one of the hardest working people we have here. You'll see all about that in a couple minutes. On Brian's 10th year anniversary, Jeff and Kim came to him and said, Brian, we've got that 10 solid years. We'd like to get you an anniversary gift. What would you like? Kind of thought about it for a second said, you know, I really like to climb rocks. So on his 10th year, he got a rock climbing wall on his 10th anniversary. Is that climbed during his breaks. Obviously kind of led to the whole director of fun thing. But guys, uh, 22 years with any company, that's something to be very, very proud of. And so is 20 years of marriage. Guys, he caught that little boyfriend word and said, what about a fiancé? Would you come at her for a fiancé? Of course she said yes. They've been married for 20 years now. Their little girl just turned 16 last December. Ah. Cheers to the Callahan. <laughs> but I will point out, he still chose the beer. <laughs> he still chose the beer. Um, so guys, uh... Talked a little bit about a nice, nice little marriage story for you there. Got a little divorce story for you now. 1996, Jeff and Kim, they decided to split, divorce, separate, call it what you will. Jeff didn't have a whole lot of ambition to run a brewery. He had ambition to make really good beer. And he had done that and was ready to move on. Kim, on the other hand, that girl was an entrepreneur. She says, I will take this brewery and I am going to run. So when they split, that left Kim and the board members with 59% of the shares in New Belgium. The other 41%? us. Being part of a 41% employee-owned company is something that's absolutely amazing. Now guys, I mentioned earlier what kind of a person Kim Jordan was and the level of her generosity. I'm about to add on to that. Guys, we have biannual retreats. Every year, twice a year, we'll shut the brewery down for three consecutive days. 
We'll bring in 300 coworkers in from around the country to get together with the 200 that we already have in the state of Colorado. That's 500 New Belgium coworkers for three days at a shut down brewery for team building exercises. <laughs> Lots of beer. Lots of beer. Now, guys, January 14th, 2013, I will never forget this day. During our winter retreat, Kim Jordan got us all together at the Lincoln Center, which is a local auditorium. We walk in, Kim hands us a, a beer and hands us an envelope. She says, open the beer. Do not open the envelope. So we do. We open the beer. We're drinking our beer. Kim gets up on stage and starts chatting. Right about a half hour later, another round of beer comes out for all the coworkers to enjoy. Pop those open. We start drinking those. Kim starts talking about some very, very serious, serious stuff. She says, guys, everything, and I mean everything, eventually comes to an end. She said, when New Belgium comes to an end in my world, I'm going to make sure it's going to be in the hands of people that are going to treat it right. Treat it with the respect and the dignity that it deserves. She said, we worked way too hard to build this brewery up to what it is. We're not about to hand it over to somebody else and let them tear down what we built. Having said that, Kim Jordan said, myself, me and Kim Jordan, and the other 11 board members have decided to go ahead and sell our 59% of the shares of New Belgium. You guys got really quiet in this room. The only thing you could really hear was a bunch of pop top, chug, chug, chug. And a lot of people felt it was necessary to slam their beer right then. But Kim went on to say, it's not very often it's such an opportunity to make such an impact on so many people's lives. She says, open the envelope. You'll see the brand new owners in New Belgium. You open it up, wooden engraved mirrors. You guys, we are now 100% employee owned thanks to Kim Jordan's generosity. Now, not only did Kim Jordan sell off all of her shares, she's still our CEO, she's still our COO, and will be for the next seven to eight years without a paycheck. Okay? She gets her brewery buyout, and that's about it. Talk about love and passion. That love, that passion, bleeds in this brewery. It's one of the many, many things to set us aside. Cheers to Kim Jordan. Yeah. You guys ready to go to Thunderdome? Yes. And then go beyond Thunderdome? Oh, sure. Yeah, right this way. Two, three, four, five, six, and a possible seven. As far as drinking? Oh, yeah. Yeah? A possible or a seven? Possible. possible. I have to taste his first. <laughs> well, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, now, for you, you, and you, you guys will not be able to take part in this, unfortunately, but you guys can watch us all take part in it, and I'm not just talking about drinking. I think I'm going to take seven of you, possible six. And take you guys all out there and let you grab your own bottle of beer fresh off the line. Guys, this does not happen. But we have a small enough group to where we're going to make it happen. How's that feel? You guys feel all right with that? So so I don't three, like this anymore. We're going to go out there. So um, close toes, close toes. Yeah, close toes. Oh, so you guys are here. You guys are out there anyway. Um, all right, so, so guys, you six or you seven, your choice. Please follow me. Wait, are we not able to go? Okay, just hang out here. I don't like this anymore. I wish I was 21. The privileges these people get, it's not, it's not fair.
Good thing we came today, I guess. Beer, 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 more beer. <laughs> And pool table. Today. And more beer. And beer. And then the people. Great. I think we have to pour their own. Hmm? I think we have to pour their own. No, they have to take their own thing. No, they get their own bottle. This isn't fair. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't fair anymore. This isn't fun anymore. Guys, let's head on upstairs. Everybody head on upstairs. Let me see. Oh. I will start the trend. Oh, well, I didn't see it, that it goes up there. Come on up, guys. Volunteering, one of the three. Shire <laughs> one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and can we borrow your beer for a second? As long as I get it back. Do I get to taste it? No. Watch out, behind you. All right. Come here. You see this 1 4 number? Yeah. Read the first six digits left to right. That's what you got to have your hand. 0 3 0. Oh, well, including the 1 4. Oh, 1 4 0 3 0 5. Okay. So if you switch those numbers around, Take the one four out, you're going to be zero three zero five, and then back to the one four, right? Is it ringing any bells? Ah, oh. that's today, right? What's that four digit number right there? One two three zero. One two three zero. What time is it right now? Thirty. Guys, obviously this beer is less than a minute old. This is quite possibly wow. the freshest triple you will ever oh. have, except for my hands just now. No human hands have ever touched any of these bottles. Except your guys, so I kind get of cool it. thing. So yeah. cheers, guys! I hope you guys enjoy those. Um, now, guys, uh, you guys all familiar with our logos? You guys know the watercolors? You guys notice the new logo we got going on this? You guys don't want to know why we switched the logos? There's actually, there's actually here. Uh, I'm gonna borrow his his real quick because I don't care if I get my hand muggy hands all over his. Um, <laughs> so, guys, we're we're doing a facelift on all of our logos. All of our logos gonna have that broad stripe across the top with the name of the beer and then a, a logo that depicts that beer underneath it. The color of this broad stripe is going to vary based on the beer, blue for fat, tired, green for ranger, gold for rabbit, yellow for sunshine, and so on. Um, but guys, there's two reasons why we decided to do this. There's a minor reason and there's a major reason. The minor reason is product recognition. It used to be that if you held a six-pack of fat tire next to a six-pack of ranger, it didn't even look like it was from the same brewery. A lot of people thought of us as the fat tire brewery. We're not. We have a lot more than fat tire to offer. So uh, that's kind of a product recognition thing. You should be able to look into a cooler and see what's New Belgium and what's not. That's a minor reason. You guys want to hear the major reason why we changed? It takes a little bit of a story. 1991, when the brewery was born, Jeff and Tim went next door to the neighbor, Ann Finch, and said, Ann, you're an amazing watercolor artist. Would you mind doing a couple logos for us until we figure out what it is we're going to do, and then we can do that. Guys, 22 years later, we're still using the same logos. You guys remember that fall pump kick we had last year, the, the, the pump kick? Uh, that was the last logo that Ann Finch ever did for us. She's retiring, so we figured, you know what? What better way to, to send her out than retiring her logos with her? It's kind of a respectful thing to do. Besides, we don't have anybody that can match that quality of watercolor art uh, for our new logos that we have coming out. So we just figured, you know what? Product recognition, retire the logo in respect for Anne. Time to move on. Uh, granted, uh, it, it looks quite a bit different. A lot of people say it looks, looks pretty classic. I think it looks great. Um, but the beer on the inside, that's the same. It's not changing at all. So, and that's what matters, right? Yeah. Now, guys. Uh, you guys feel good with that? Now you know why. All right, you guys are ready to check this place out? This is our Thunderdome, a.k.a. our bottling line, which you guys were just down on. Uh, if you guys want to follow the path of the beer, look all the way to the back side of the room where that yellow railing is. That's where all of our clean, empty bottles are going to come into the building. They're going to go to the right-hand side, then start coming towards you. Once they get uh, right underneath your nose, they're going to go from right to the left, all the way over here to this far left-hand side where we have a double carousel. And there's plenty of windows if you guys want to go down there and check that out, that's perfectly fine. 
Uh, it's a double carousel. That double carousel is our filler. It's going to take those bottles, it's going to flip them upside down, rinse the inside out with clean water. Then it's going to take those bottles and flip them right side up, fill them with pure deliciousness, and then cap them. Yeah, then it's going to take that same water and rinse out the inside and rinse off the outside. It saves us hundreds of thousands it of gallons take of water good a day. Pictures on mine. Guys, that filler will operate for 12 ounce bottles and roughly 700 bottles in just one minute. Uh, when you're looking at the 22 ounce size, we're talking 360 bottles in just one minute. Um, now guys, when that's all said and done, those empty bottles that are not labeled, going to shoot out to the right hand side, wrap around, and then go back behind that double carousel to where we have a single carousel that is our labeler, rocking at 741 bottles per minute. Uh, once those bottles are labeled, it's going to make its way further back into the room where we do all of our packaging. Now guys, the way this room basically breaks down, breaks down is it breaks down into three portions. This front third of the room, like I told you, is where we're going to fill all of our 12 and our 22 ounce bottles and then label them. The middle third of the room is where we're going to take those 12 ounce bottles, we're going to drop them into six pack carriers, and then those four six pack carriers into a case. The third portion of the room is where we're going to take those individual 12 or those individual 22 ounce bottles and put them in 12 packs, folly packs, 24 packs, that kind of stuff. Um, does that all make sense on how the room's broken down? All right, guys, once everything's all said and done, it's going to make its way to the far left-hand side of the room where we have a blue one-armed robot that palletizes all that beer. You can see him right over there, and actually, he's right in the sunlight, so it's kind of a good shot. Um, but he's going to palletize all that beer. Uh, the 12-ounce bottles get 60 cases per pallet. The 22-ounce bottles get 64 cases per pallet. Um, those bottles or those, uh, those pallets are going to make their, their way out to the warehouse and suddenly out to the liquor stores. Um, anybody have any basic questions right now about the bottom line? Where's your bottom line? Uh, this is a German one, yes. I'm pretty, pretty much sure, sure most of our stuff is going to be done. But guys, one thing that you'll notice if you look down the next to the beautiful sea of red caps is, is that a bottle of the burning down there, isn't there? No, we actually do not mass produce any of our beers all each quarter. So what's going to happen is before each quarter, we're going to get an order from all of our distributors telling us what they need. We're just going to package it and we're going to send it out to them. So it varies. Some days we'll do one beer all day long. Some days we'll do four different beers. So it, it varies. Uh, but guys, like I said, we don't have a lot of Laverne and Shirley's down there. This is a fully automated uh, packaging system. Uh, with a full staff between the bottling and the canning line, we have no more than eight total employees down there. Uh, and those guys are just basically there to make sure everything's uh, stocked and ready to go. Uh, they, they help prevent any malfunctions or they uh, basically uh, stop any jams or anything. So, um, anybody have any questions about the bottom line? Mom. Mom. If you look right here, it, te it tells you how many bottles I've sold today. You guys ready to move to the 78,216 bottles. Uh, no, we get all our glass from Windsor Glass, about 20 miles southeast of town. Yeah. Ready to roll? Right this way. 78,219. Kevin, don't forget your beer. <laughs> job of that. Number two, be environmental stewards. You guys remember in the brew house too when we were talking about that Merlin kettle, the one with the funny pipes coming out of the top? What we're doing there is we're capturing steam from that vessel. We're going to take that steam and we're going to use that steam energy to reheat our next batch of water for our next batch of beer. Behind me we have the solar panel. Up on this roof we have 871 more of these solar panels. I can kind of back up to this even though it's a weird angle and shut that thing down completely. Imagine how much power 871 of these can provide. Um, on the east side of this property we have a water treatment facility. We get all of our water from the city of Fort Collins, and we're going to use that water however we see fit. When we're done with that water, we're going to send it out to our water treatment facility where they clean that water just as good as the city of Fort Collins before they give it back to them. Except when we clean it, we capture methane gas. We're going to take that methane gas, and we're going to burn it. So between the steam energy, the solar panels, and that methane gas, in 2013, that accounted for 18% of our energy that was self-generated. I'd say with how much energy we use, that's a pretty cool stat. There's one other here, another really cool stat. 2013, we had a 99.9% .9 landfill diversion rate. 99.9% .9 of our waste never made it to the landfill. It got reduced, reused, or recycled in one way or another. That's pretty cool. You guys want to hear about a third and quite possibly most important core value belief is? Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> as simple as that. Have fun. <laughs>
If you have fun doing what you're doing, you're going to exert a certain amount of passion and love for what you do. You're going to put out a really good product, and that's one of the things we thrive on here. So, you guys ready to go beyond Thunderdome? Right this way. <clears throat> I like how when he laid against the solar panel, like, that thing completely stopped. Where's the excess? Poles is like me. Good job, Alan. You failed. Oh, yeah. Ping bong. But that centrifuge takes energy, and then it's like, okay, so what are you doing? Uh, uh, because you guys to grab yourself a shift. Can the children have this one yet? No. <laughs> Man, you're getting thirsty, huh? Yeah. There's some water. If anything, he's nothing else he's persistent. <laughs> I know. I'll pass on the chemicals, but the beer I'll buy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't want it. All right, everybody has beer? That's going to have one. All right. So, guys, uh, welcome to the candy line. Uh, if you look above the, the candelier above the stairs, right here, see that? Tired sunshine. Those are the only four brands. You see that? that yeah, right I do. Now. However, uh, we just have to release the next shot in the can, which is available there. And uh, we'll probably put one or two more sometime this year. I'm going to put my dip on that and say what it is. But, um, Thank you. Guys, no. Obviously, this candy line runs 360 cans a minute, the 12 or the 16 ounce size. Um, guys, I'm not gonna lie. There's just not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the canon. Does anybody have any specific questions I can ask? Fair answer. What's your? What's my? Is it conveyor? Or oh, yeah. Where? The empty. Uh, that's that's conveyor. That's conveyor. Yeah. Well, that's not way afterwards, but pre. Um, you know, I'm not sure how those how those are moving. I'm not sure. Dane said 360 cans in there. 360 at the either size, 16 or the 12 ounce size. Um, so guys, so, move down there, we're going to do a little bit of shift. Who's that shift before? Hmm? You're just you familiar with the can? Oh, no. See what I'm talking about with this new facelift? It's a broad stripe across the top. You have the logo at the bottom. Uh, and then as I said, shift, obviously there's the old can. Um, just, just hold it up. I don't want to touch the bottom. Oh. But yeah, yeah, see what I'm talking about? How, just, how it's very universal, very similar. Uh, that way you can look in the, in the cooler and see what's, what's going on. So. Um, so anybody else have any questions about the canning line? Well, I have a question about you get to drink from the time you come until you go home? I get to do whatever I want. Oh. <laughs> you get to have fun. I get to have fun. Place. So, okay, the point, <laughs> so the question is, is when you apply for the job, how many other applicants were there? Oh, we, we average over 300 applicants for every single opening that we get. Hmm. And one of the gals told me there was 800. It depends on the situation, on the, on the, uh, the position, but yeah, I, I can see how that might happen. So you mean that they can drink down on the floor too, or not? Let, let me let me put it let me put it to you like this. We are all 100 percent employee owned. We know what our priorities are. Right. If we're sitting down there drinking, it's not going to be a good thing. Right. We all we all know what what our ownership mentality is, and that we have a job to do. Uh, right. Yes, we would love to drink beer all day long, but we know that uh, we we're, we're not going to be doing that. Well, I just um, thought, what a fun job. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, people, people like like Kevin and I, we we uh, we actually have the, uh, the the fortunate position of doing what we do. Uh huh. To where we get to drink on the job. <laughs> however, however, we still do have to, have to monitor that. And, I mean, can, if, can you imagine how it would be if you had a top I would tour guide? <laughs> What's that? I know how I'd be after right, two or three right. years. So, so if, if you had a, if you had a, if you had a, a top skated tour guide, that's not going to be good. No, that's rolling down the steps so. would not be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we know how to control it. Um, for, for me, this is the only full uh, glass I will drink on my entire tour. I hardly sip anything back in the tasting room. My next tour, I'll get another one of these. Uh, I probably have between 12 and 16 ounces throughout a shift, which is less than a pint throughout the entire day. So uh, it is controlled. Yeah, that is. What about but, when you get But at the same time, we have that freedom because we are, we're trusted. The, the, the level of trust in this place is absolutely insane. When I first started, and Kevin too, when they first, on their very first day you start, they give you a magnetic key card. So this magnetic key card will let you in any room of the brewery any time of day. We're allowed to come in. It's a lot in the morning down here, so it's about 
You guys want to hear some benefits and perks about being a new belt and trail worker? Sure. Yeah? Well, like I said, day one, you get that magnetic key card. Let you in your room in the brewery uh, any time of day. Quick little story I have to go along with that. I've been here for about a week. A friend of mine was passing through town. He had never been to Fort Collins before. And obviously, never been to the brewery. Shows up at my house about 10.30 and I just going to crash on my couch, get up early the next day, and he had absolutely no ambition on seeing daylight hours. I get to my house about 10.30, start talking about my newfound job. So I'd like to go check the place out. Unfortunately, they're closed. Me being who I am, I said, I'm an owner. Let's go. So we did. We got here better about 11 o'clock. About 11 05, someone approached us and said, Who are you and what are you doing here? I showed him my badge. I said, My name is Dan. I'm a new co worker. As soon as I showed him that badge, he was like, Oh, no, it's welcome. Check this out. Check that out. Here, have some beer. You want to try this beer? It was just a really cool feeling to know that, that I've been here for five, for, for one week, and as soon as I showed this guy my badge, it's like I was a part of the family. Again, absolutely no idea who I was. But moving on from that, um, the fact that they gave me this card in the first place is a pretty big generous gesture of trust saying, hey, you are now part of the family. You are an owner. Act like one. You want to come in here at 2 o'clock in the morning and pick up a case of beer, take home, and finish your night off? By all means, go right ahead. Um, bring a friend in and have a couple beers while you wait for a cab. It's, it's very, very lax. But they expect you to act like the owner that you are. And if you're not respecting that, you're not going to be an owner for very long. Um, now, also on your very first day, you guys remember when I told you that Brian Callahan got paid a year? So we, we're allowed to take home a 12 pack every single week. If I'm going camping this weekend and I want to take the three or four cases with me, I do. I don't have to tell anybody or sign it out or check it out. I simply take the beer. But as an owner, it's my responsibility to make sure those weeks leading up to and or following, I don't take that beer. I, don't take, I need to make sure it evens out. Otherwise, I'm taking it out of Kevin's pocket, I'm taking it out of my pocket, I'm taking it out of the brewery's pocket, and that's not the way it works. Um, now, on your one-year anniversary, you get that bike. I told you about that. If you lose your job on day 366, it doesn't matter. That bike is yours to keep forever. Now, on day 366, that's when you get voted in as an employee owner. You may not be one from day one to day 366, but they treat you like one. On day 366, they vote you in and you physically become one. Now, what does that mean? It means you take part, start taking part in the employee stock program as well as profit sharing. With a 100% employee owned company, that's something you need to grab your part of. Now guys, on your uh, one on your uh, uh, higher anniversary, you get quite possibly the coolest anniversary that you can imagine. You know what that was? Get an all expenses paid trip to Belgium. And you go out to Belgium for one full week. You go out there with Kim Jordan. You go out there with Peter Bruckart, who was our master brewer. We got from Rodenbach Brewery in Belgium. Has anyone ever heard of Rodenbach Brewery? They are world renowned for their sours, which really explains a lot what we got going on about our sour program. So you go out there with Kim Jordan. You go out there with Peter Bucart, our master brewer since 1996. And you go out there with anyone else that was hired in your class. For me, anyone that was hired in 2012 will be with me in Belgium in 2017. Now, guys, one of those guys is a high school buddy of mine, and that's going to get quite rowdy, I guarantee you. Um, <laughs> now, guys, when you, now the th three things about this trip. Number one, it's all expenses paid. Number two, they give you a little bit of spending money once you get out there. Number three, Belgian brewer, Belgian brewery in the United States. What better place to learn the Belgian roots of brewing than Belgium? So you're actually paid to be there. All expenses paid, a little bit of money, and you're paid to be there? That sounded like a really cool day. <laughs> now when you get back, five years after you get back on your 10th year anniversary, you get another cool gift, and that's a four-week paid sabbatical. You're out of here for four consecutive weeks of paid vacation. There are three rules as a sabbatical. Number one, you don't answer any emails or any phone calls coming from the brewery. Number yeah. two, you do not show your face at New Belgium. If you show your face at New Belgium during one of your sabbaticals, you best be coming in to pick up some more beer. The third thing, if you come back after those four weeks refreshed, ready to rock out another 10 years, because at the end of that 10 years, you get another four week paid sabbatical. And you are allowed to take up the two weeks of your existing paid time off paired up with that sabbatical, so you can take up the six weeks consecutive paid time off. I don't know about you, but I can go nuts with that. That would be so much fun. Um, anybody have any questions about the, uh, the beer? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what the turnout were right here. Going into 2013, we had a 97% employee retention rate. That's pretty high. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, uh, 300 applicants for every single opening outside magazine deemed us one of the top five companies in the country to work for for five consecutive years. Uh, we're very proud of that stat. It's very hard to get a job here. Anybody have any questions? Guys, I got a question for you. You guys all remember going down the slide as kids, right? <laughs> when was the last time you guys did that? We're drinking a bunch of beer. <laughs> We're gonna do it right now. Guys, please bring your glasses up here. Go ahead and put them in this rack. And uh, follow me outside, please. <coughs> Can we just like hold a glass of beer and still do it, but not drink it? No. Gosh. You can't, you can't handle it.
handle beer. Yeah. What's that? No carry? No carry what? The beer? Uh, you can if you want to. Just don't spill it. <laughs> it's not my car, it's just like chilling there. Go! Come on. Oh, you I don't know how to. Yes, yeah, I don't know. Just slide. But I want to do what he told me to do. Grab your legs. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Okay, so Oops. what do I do? Pull your legs up. Come on, Dad. Sorry, sorry. Okay. And hold this. Go. Put my feet around. I, I won't be able to record it. <laughs> this was really fun. <laughs> Buying beer. Yeah, only if I was able to. Get it now because she's not here. I don't care. And she's got to deal with me. Cool, get a shirt. Huh? Get a shirt. Come on. I need to watch your guys' beers, though. Oh, there's Give me a frisbee. Someone's going to grab a frisbee. I don't know what I want, though. Here, I want this $50 necklace. Or what about that one? I'd get in trouble for that uh, one. Says Nick Bell's and Wheat Beer. Then probably that one. Where is mom? I think they're in the bathroom. I got two more in the bathroom. I need three growlers. Will you raise the growlers? No. What's a growler? Jeanne's going to cover. Even though Tara's the only one here in the corner. He's not even there. What is it? What's a growler? What would you like your growlers out? Let's do one sunshine. Oh, one. Uh, one sunshine, one of the seasonal. Dang! Yes. I'm gonna watch you film it. On the other one. I'm gonna watch you do it. That's going to be taking a while. Oh, yeah. We're not buying this. Nothing. Well, it went for Alan. Oh, I wasn't meeting that one. Really? It almost feels right. That looks bad. No. Okay, I'm ready. Where do you sit now? Really? Well, it's going down. Great, let's go. The corners are set up. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
So I think it's like that's the capacity. They can do about four hours. Like, I would say that 360 is what we think. So I'm going to say that was hard, but for the first time, I'm going to say that was hard. <laughs> they call it a... It's kind of cool. Is Snapshot real um, off No, not at all. Okay. One of them. Oh, yeah, I might want to go check the beer over there, too. Did it even show her? Show her those pictures too. I'm sure I got my finger done, it's okay. Indeed. Like, not so, really, like, super happy. 